Uh, good morning or good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. Crystal here. I'm just here to share with you a program that I wrote today, and I made a blog post on it. Um, and it, it's a time series traffic problem using Facebook Profit. And so it's a multivariate problem. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's on my GitHub account, Tracy Renee 61 So you can always go to my GitHub account and get the um, get the program and follow along with me. But what I'll do is I'll save a link to it in the description box below. So you can either get it on GitHub or you can get it on NP Viewer if you don't have a GitHub account. So the first thing we'll do is we'll talk about the problem statement, which is you are working with the government to transform your city into a smart city. The vision is to convert it into a digital and intelligent city to improve the efficiency of services for the citizens. One of the problems faced by the government is traffic. You are a data scientist working to manage the traffic of the city better and to provide input on infrastructure planning for the future. The government wants to implement a robust traffic system for the city by being prepared for traffic peaks. They want to understand the traffic patterns of the four junctions of the city. Traffic patterns on holidays, as well as on various other occasions during the year, differ from normal working days. This is important to take into account for your forecasting. To prevent the traffic patterns in each of these four junctions for the four next, next four months. The sensors on each of these junctions were collecting data at different times, hence you will see traffic data from different times periods. To add to the complexity, some of the junctions have provided limited or sparse data requiring thoughtfulness when creating future projections. Depending upon the historical data of 20 months, the government is looking to you to deliver accurate projections for the coming four months. Your algorithm will become the foundation of a larger transformation to make your city smart and intelligent. So the first thing we want to do is we want to import our libraries, and then we want to import our CSV files, which I've already done. And then you want to look at your train file so you can see your train file. And you want to look at your test file so you can see your test file. And you want to look at your sample ID. So one thing that I sort of forgot to do is I wanted, forgot to check for any missing variables. Uh, but what I'll do is if it had an NAN in it, I don't think it would work. But what I'll do is I'll go back after I do this video and I'll check for any missing variables and see if there are any missing variables. See if um, that will affect my reading and make it better. And the next thing I did was I took out the ID, but I created a variable called ID train and ID test. And then I dropped the column that said ID because we're not going to need that for Facebook profit. And then what I had to do was I had to rename the columns because in Facebook profit, your columns have to be named a certain thing. Otherwise, it won't work. So the dot. The date time is called DS, and then the first column after that is called add one, and your target is called Y. And then what I've done is I've plotted it on um, a graph, so you can see what this information looks like on a graph. I split the training set for testing and validation. So the training set is uh, anything less than 2000, anything greater than 2017-0101. The validation set is anything uh, greater than or equal to 2017-0101. An X test is anything greater than or equal to 2017-0701. And now we've put our model together, which is our Facebook profit, and we've had to add a regressor called add one, and we fit our model into X train. 
we predicted on our validation set. And so you can see the prediction and you can see y hat at the very end. And then we've calculated our root mean squared, which is 30. And then the best root mean squared for that on the solution checker or the leaderboard is like 10 or something like that. So we've got a long ways to go. Let me just look on the leaderboard. I'm just looking on the leaderboard right now. It's been quite slow, but I think it's 10 or 1. 6. 6 was the best score on the leaderboard. And uh, we made a data frame so you can compare the actual values against the predicted values. And then what we did was we plotted it so you can see a plot of what Y hat looks like. And we did some more plots. So if you're really good on graphs and understand them, you can see what they look like. So um, now what we've done is we have predicted on the test set. And um, so we've called this prediction. And if you come towards the very end, you've got your Y hat. So we took in the output and we created a data frame. And then on the data frame, we've converted that to a CSV file. And when we converted it to a CSV file, we uploaded it into Analytics Fit Higher. And on Analytics Fit Higher, I got a 37. So, you know, it wasn't fantastic, but it was got me on the leaderboard. And obviously, it needs some more work. And what I'm going to do is, I know you can't see this, but I'm going to look on the leaderboard. And so, leaderboard, the lowest score on the leaderboard was 774. So, even though I didn't win, you know, I, I didn't win, it was enough to get you on the leaderboard. And it was a respectable, it was respectable value that you can work on.